Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lighting is here today. That's right. Hey, the King of Lighting is here today to do a One Piece discussion video centered around Don Quixote do Flamingo. That's right. Now, it's all right. Before I get started, this video contains spoilers for those of you guys who do not read the manga. So, unfortunately, for those of you guys who do not read the manga, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. You don't want to be here, all right? Because if you're going to be here, you're going to get real pissed off at me. The spoilers, man. Hey, <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Like, listen, I, I'm, I'm giving you fair warning. You don't want to be here if you are not a uh, weekly viewer of the One Piece manga, all right? Because there, because this video is going to entail something very specific about something that was revealed, or possibly revealed, in the latest chapter of One Piece. So you definitely don't want to be here. So, I'll give you guys five seconds, and we'll leave it at that. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now, for those of you guys who are remaining here, I'm assuming that you guys are, in fact, uh, up to date with the One Piece manga, all right? So, and again, that's my assumption. So, don't tell me that King of Lightning didn't give you any warnings. No, the fuck that shit. I gave you plenty of warnings, right? I gave you over a minute. All right, now. In this week's chapter, One Piece. All right. In, yeah, yeah. Listen, in this week's chapter. Yeah, a fan right there. In this week's chapter, One Piece. It was really, it was strongly hinted by Trafalgar Law. That Don Quixote do Flamingo, because he had the power to literally reverse the decision made by the world government about him, about his status of Shi Chimukai being revoked and now being reinstated. The conclusion that Trafalgar Law came to was that Quixote may in fact be someone connected, or actually be, a Tenrubito, a Celestial Dragon. And we all know that the Celestial Dragons are, in fact, the ones who are the descendants of the 20 kings who established the world government, all right? Now, granted, per se, the Tenrubito, they're not the leaders of the world government, all right? The leaders of the world government are the Gorosei. The uh, the the uh, five old dudes, right? They are the leaders of the world, all right. Everything that happens in the world government is stated by them, and they all live in the Holy Land. Uh, uh, I like saying my Mary Joes because because that's what it is. It's, it's Mary Joes, but uh, the Japanese they say Mary so I'm gonna say Mary and basically they live there. So the thing about the Tenuto is that they also live there, okay. And Flamingo at some point. The thing that's very intriguing about Flamingo. So, so like, there's going to be, there's going to be no, there's, there, there is no order to this video. It's me talking, all right? It's me talking from my knowledge, all right? And what I know. The thing about Flamingo that's very intriguing, all right? Is that Flamingo has a fucking bounty. Well, before he became a Shichibukai, he had a bounty. Which means that for a period of time, he was a pirate. For a period of time, he was a pirate. And his bounty got up to three hundred forty million. Now the thing about that is that we don't know what time frame when that occurred. All right, but I believe, and I could be wrong about this. All right, but I believe in the One Piece Film Z special. The no, no, yeah, no, not, not well, uh, no, not Film Z. In the One Piece Strong World special, uh, episode zero, I believe, where Roger got executed, we saw. We saw like uh, photos of people. We saw and we saw a younger. We we saw a younger Gecko Moria. We saw a younger Mihawk, and I think we even saw a younger Flamingo. And Flamingo, I did research. He is around. He yeah. At this point in time, he's forty-one years old. Okay, so and I could be wrong about this, but if in fact Flamingo was there. At the execution site of Goldie Roger. According to the One Piece uh, Strong World uh, special, Episode Zero. 
then that means that that was like what 20 years ago 22 years ago okay so that means that 22 years ago flamingo had to have been a pirate there's no way a ten Ririto would i mean well either that or he was like either he just turned into a pirate then because there's no there's no way there was just absolutely no way that a ten Ririto is going to just walk up in in the middle of Gold D. Roger, the Pirate King's execution. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't buy it. I doubt it. But that's the way I see it. So, at 19, he was either a, he was either an already established pirate, or but since he was young, he probably at that point in time was just starting off as a pirate. And again, this is my and this is coming from my assumption that he was one of the, that he was one of the people shown in the, the one of the younger versions of like when he was younger he was shown in the strong world zero film again i could be so wrong about that i could be so wrong but we'll see because because i forget now i did get a lot of pms from people telling me that that he may be a son of one of the girls say and that I'm not too sure because the thing about it is that I don't know where the girls they stand when it comes to the ten new Beto. I do know that they in fact are the leaders of the new uh, that they in fact are the leaders of the world government, and they have say over all things that reside that are government related. Like they have say over the fleet admiral, over uh, over Kong, and Kong he is the uh, like he's above the fleet admiral. I forgot what he was. I, I, know, I, I know that Khan was the Fleet Admiral during Goldie Rogers' era, but I don't know what he is now. He's above Fleet Admiral. But he, and, 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 and so, but basically, like, where they stand amongst the nobles, because the Ten Rubito are specifically the descendants of the 20 kings that founded the world government 800, no, no, 900 years ago, or 1,000 years ago, sometime in the, yeah, yeah, I think it was, I, th I think it was around 1,000 years ago. So the thing about it is that you cannot be a Ten Ririto unless you are specifically a descendant of those 20 kings. You cannot be. It's, it's not possible. It's not, it's not how it works. So the question is, unless these unless the Gorosei are descendants of these 20 kings, then in my personal opinion, Quixote cannot be related to them. Either son or or, or 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 grandfather, no, no way, no. But if they are descendants, then there is a possibility that he can be a son or a grandson uh, from one of the celestial, but I mean from one of the uh, Gorose. That is possible. That is very possible. Very possible. So it all depends. But we just don't know enough about the Gorose. And hopefully, hopefully we'll find out more as things proceed along in this arc. I mean, that, that'd be really nice. But at this point in time, we're not too sure, all right? Now, aside from that, we don't know what was the catalyst for him. Because if, in fact, he was a Ten Rubito, at some point they have to know that. And then when he was running him like, as a pirate, and he probably did so, and I'm going to assume, given his personality... Because he's a very, not only is he power hungry, that's very reminiscent of the Tenribito. Because the, Ten, the Tenribito, they abuse the shit out of their power. They abuse the living fuck out of their power. So, in that mindset, they're very similar. But the thing about it is that he may not have liked the way his life was leading when he was a child in Marijol. Because the thing about it is that, from what we know... Like, the Holy Land, I mean, because we, we don't know how things work very exactly. All we know is that the Tenrito live there, and they have slaves. And the slaves, they could be fishermen, they could be mermaids, w w which are very rare, humans, and, you know, captains with, you know, dove powers, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, again, we, we, we don't know what led him to do what he did when it came to him leaving the Holy Land. But... And we don't know what the catalyst was for him becoming a Shishibukai, all right? But given that he was able to attain a bounty of 340 million berry, 
we could assume that he was a that he was a, that he was a, that he was a uh, 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 that he was that he was a full blown evil pirate running amok across the world for a vast period of time for give or take ten years yeah 10, 15 years that's a moment to assume now how he became the leader of this how he became the leader of Dress Rosa is up in the wind we don't know all right we don't know however we can assume. That he established control of Dress Rosa in the same fashion that Whitebeard and Luffy have gone around. Well, Luffy, in the case of Fisherman Island, have gone around establishing territories. But because he's a, but because he is a Shichibukai, he is now protected by the world government. And in the same fashion as Boa Hancock, who was the empress of an island in the Khan Belt, he is the king of an island in the new world because he is protected underneath the uh uh you know world government and though and 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 such he has political power by just being a shichibukai alone and i mean i i kind of wonder like because he's a king quote unquote will like does he go attend the the uh, reverie and the, the reverie, we, we uh, if you guys forgot, the reverie is basically the meeting of the, it's the world council. It's when the kings from all these countries come together. Since Flamingo has connected to the Tenribito, him going to the world council, I think is, I, I think actually makes a lot of sense. Because he's a king in an island in the new world. So I think it makes a lot of sense. I really do, yeah. And also, you have to understand is that, so, so I'm starting to think, that maybe, maybe, the when he was a pirate, maybe when he established Dress Rosa as a territory of his own, probably, probably around that same time, the world government came, came to him. Yeah, the world government came to him and asked him to become a Shishibukai. And the reason why is because we all know that the new world is run not by the world government, not by the Marines. It is run by the Yonko. They dominate the New World. It is their territory. All right. It's Big Man. It's Kaido. It was Whitebeard and Shanks. They run the New World. So when you have someone who is connected to the world government in a in a very strong way via Tenribito, via Shichibukai, via all these other positions, and was a former pirate who 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 would be respected by the Yon call, then in fact, well, he's re re respected in the sense of that they're all pirates, then it would be a very advantageous position to have someone in the DL amongst the pirate world who has an island, who, who, who has an island established in the new world. So, like, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that they saw Flamingo and they somehow knew his backstory and his background. And they gave him the title of Shichibukai because it would be advantageous for the world government to have someone who can relate to them and be in a position of power, not only amongst the world government, but also amongst the pirates and the Yonko, and have an island established in the new world. So, and again, like all this stuff is right now coming to, my, coming to my mind. But that's what I'm thinking right now. But again, I could be completely fucking wrong. I could be so wrong because... Oda, only Oda knows. Oda's the one who hit at the shit. And it's like, fuck, like, why? Like, why? 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 God damn it, Oda. Makes it too goddamn complicated. Now, there is one last thing I, th I think I'm to point to. And then I think that's it with Flamingo. Because his hockey abilities are, I mean, like, their abilities, innate abilities, if he has them, which he probably does. His Devil Fruit ability, we don't know when he got it. We, we have no idea when he got it. He could have got it when he was up in uh, Marijo and left. Because you, you kind of have to wonder. Yeah, like, you really you really have to wonder how the fuck did a kid escape the Holy Land? Like, how do you do that? I mean, Fisher Tiger. Fisher Tiger, he, 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 he climbed that thing. And he's a fisherman. And fishermen at a base norm have ten times the, as much strength as a human being. So, that makes sense. So... If in fact Flamingo got, got his devil powers when he was in the Holy Land, and then using his powers with like the strings, he could have escaped in that method. Okay, fine. 
Or he could have gotten it while he was pirating around. I don't know. He could have been a stowaway in a ship. I don't know. We have no idea. None. Zero. Zero. Um. Actually, wait. There is the so so so. There is two more things I want to talk about. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is him being known as the Sky Demon. And simply put, we know that the Holy Land is located on top of the Red Line. It is, and we don't know how big the Red Line is. The Red Line is fucking huge. The Red Line is 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 is. I want to probably say when it comes to height. It's probably taller than Mount Everest. Like it, it, it's it's up there. It's it's really got. Not only does it go around the entire planet, but also it's very high up. Like it goes well to the clouds. Like I think almost every time I've seen the Holy Land, like and like no, like there's a picture of the actual castle, and I think it's always like in the clouds. Like literally, like always in the clouds, like on some true shit. So. I mean, maybe the re maybe the reference of Sky Demon comes from that aspect, where because he's, he's not from a Sky Island. I mean, not, now we know he's not from a Sky Island. He's, he's he comes from the Holy Land. And the last thing is that Flamingo, uh, pre time skip, he was the one who ran the human shop. He was the one. All right, his uh his uh, boy Disco. He was uh, the front man, but he was the one who ran it behind the scenes. So. And the Marines, they they must have known that. They must have definitely known that shit. So if they knew about it and then they allowed it, and they knew that the Ten Ruby Tail would, would, would be, uh, they'd be welcome to come there because that's what they get slaves. They they get slaves. One of the easiest ways to get slaves is by going to the human shop, and then they get, you know, items, quote unquote. So. Again, there's more connections here, and we and we don't know what that ties to exactly. But remember that Flamingo was in fact the one who ran the human shop. He had the human shop. That was his shop. And Disco was the one who was the front man. And the Tenrubito always came there for slaves. So 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 they can bring him back to the Holy Land and do whatever kind of shit. So but and the Marines, they had to know. The Marines, the world government, they definitely knew. They definitely knew that Flamingo was the one who ran the human shop. They, they, they fucking knew. Without a question, without, without a doubt. So, aside from that, we're not going... Because, again, we just found this shit out. In this week's chapter, One Piece. And even that's not fully confirmed. Because Law said, are you a, a Ten Ribito? And then F Flamingo said... It's kind of complicated. So, I'm trying to be more complicated since the situation is complicated. But we don't know what... Like, like again, I'm trying to make all these connections. But we're not going to really know, no until we get more information. And that's going to take time. One piece time. Because I highly doubt in the middle of the situation that Law's in. That they're going to spend time talking about uh, Flamingo's backstory. Right? Law is confronting... He's confronting... A fleet, uh, an, an admiral, and a Shichibukai. And he has to somehow maintain, he has to somehow run away while trying to keep Caesar Clown. So, obviously, it's not a situation where which he can actually ask questions about his backstory. So, we're not going to find out until, we, we, we may find out more in this arc. But, we'll see where that goes. And maybe even Kaido knows some stuff too. I mean, who knows? Because... There's there's something about Flamingo and Kaido that Flamingo has not yet talked about. He's not yet introduced into the story. But the man is too afraid of Kaido. Like he he's too afraid. You feel me? I mean, true, he retains his position and he fooled the world. But when he heard Kaido's name and when he when he understood what he, when Law told him what his uh, what his plan was and how either he fucks with the Marines or fucks with Kaido. He was sweating with Kaido. He, he, he was sweating. He was like. Ah. I mean maybe that's a direct power thing. Or it could be even more in depth. Because apparently with Flamingo. Things seem to be a lot deeper. Than they appear to be. So. But I'm done. So give me your thoughts down below. What do you guys think? I'm sitting here. Basically like this, like this video. No structure to it. But I'm just basically going by what I know right now. 
And as of right now, we know very little. We know very little. But I'm done. I, that's all I can say right now. So again, give me, give me your thoughts down below. And I'm signing out. Peace. Have a nice day.